if there's one thing that that Satan will use, he'll try to use anything, that's for sure, but if there's one thing he he will try to use and will use, if you and I are not aware of or if you and I uh, allow him to use, is fear. How many know fear is is... Is an ugly thing to live with. How many have ever had had to live with fear? I mean, I mean, I mean, where you're totally terrified about all kinds of things, and uh, the enemy wants to 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 just paralyze you. I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. I believe that that you and I need to look beyond that. And, and know who, who Jesus is in our life. Know who he is. Not just know about him, but to really know who he is in our life. And uh, I want you, I want to give you a scripture before we go to the, 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 the Psalms. Put a, put a marker right there in Psalms. And go to 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven, and And I want you to see who Jesus is. You know, so, sometimes we, we, we don't see him in the, in, the, in the word or in the scripture. But I want, I want you to see him tonight. I want you to see who he is. And I, to me, this is a very powerful scripture because uh, it's a promise. If you walk with God, this is how he'll, he'll bring you through. How many believe that? If you walk with God, he'll bring you through. Amen. So, so look what the, the Apostle Paul writes here. He says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Say victory. victory. Say it again, victory. victory. Say it again, victory. victory. Who gives us the victory, making us, making us conquerors. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Making us conquerors. How many know we, we gotta be we gotta we gotta some of us some of us we, we don't we don't look at we don't we don't believe that about ourselves. Because you gotta see Jesus in that scripture. You gotta you gotta see the promise that he gives you and me if you and I walk with him. So look what he says here. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, making us conquerors. Amen. Not, not, not victims, not being defeated, but conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. He makes us conquerors. Anybody home? Now I know I know that fear uh, is an emotion. It's a natural thing that we carry in our in our own human nature, uh, and, and 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 I believe that sometimes fear can be good, but it, fear can also be bad. Let me tell you, I, I believe fear can be good if 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 you uh, if you see a rattlesnake, you don't want to go play with it. You got to fear that thing. Or, or, or the, the stove is on. You don't want to go put your hand on top of the fire. Amen. How many understand what I'm saying? You, 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 you got to fear that thing because if that's going to hurt you. There, there are certain things that we fear that we should fear. We ought to fear sin. Somebody, somebody one day told me, I, you know, I, I, I'm afraid of the Holy Ghost. You know, he, you, they see people up here in, under the presence of the Holy Spirit, and they said, I'm, I, I fear all that. And I said, I tell them, that's the, that's the wrong thing for you to fear. That's the last thing you should fear. So you should have feared what you were doing. You should have feared your sin. That, that is dangerous. That is what's, what's destructive. Anybody with me? Yes. Amen. Sometimes we fear things we shouldn't fear. 
Amen. So I want you to go with me tonight, amen, to Psalm 53. And, and, and this, this uh, message actually, uh, Brother Frank told me about a book and I went and got it and I began to read it. And the Lord began to speak to me through this. And one of the things that he showed me through this is that, is that even right now in this hour we're living in, you and I need to be people who walk in victory. How many know victory doesn't, doesn't start with the outcome of something? Victory is living in you. How many know Jesus Christ lives in you? And if we have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, then we should have victory before the problems and after the problems. You got to see yourself as, as a person that walks in victory, not, not in defeat, not as a victim, come on, but a person who walks in victory through the Lord. Not in yourself. In ourselves, we, have, we, have, we, we, we just don't do it. We got to walk in victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's, he's the one that gives us victory. Amen. So Psalm 53 is very important because I want you to see this with me tonight. Amen. He says, it says, the empty-headed. We got any empty-headed people here? No? All right. They're all out there. Say it with me. They're all out there. All right. It says, the empty-headed fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Imagine, there is no God. Uh, have you ever heard anybody say that? I've heard people say that, that there is no God. But, but, but there is. Amen. But, but the people out there, there are people today in our world, amen, who definitely in their heart believe he does not exist. Are you here? So look at this. Corrupt and evil are they. And doing abominable iniquity, there is none who does good. There is none who does good. Let's go on. It says, God, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any who understood, who sought, inquired after, and desperately required from God. He, he says, he, he looked down to see if there was anyone who really, really looked and, and desperately wanted God. They wanted him in their life. They, he, they wanted to walk with him. God was looking, like, looking for that. There are many things that separate us from the Lord. But I want you to see this tonight. Look at verse 3. And every one of them has gone back. Now look at this. Every one of them has gone back. They have backslidden. Backslidden. Isn't that an ugly picture? You know, David's writing this. David is writing this psalm right here. He wrote this psalm. And he's writing it out of, out of strain, out of stress when he wrote this. And, and look what he's talking about. He's saying, he's saying the fool out there has said there's no God. People out there say there's no God. He says, but then he, he changes that and he says, and God looked down from heaven to see if there was anyone, anyone who, who was desperately, desperate enough to look for him, to seek for him. Now look at this, look at this. Because why? But look what God, God was looking at. He says, every one of them has gone back. Every one of them has gone back. He says, they're all backslidden. They, in, in other words, in order for you to backslide, you have got to have been there before. Say, so fear, fear is an ugly thing. Okay, and, and I'm going to be showing you that in just a moment. But look what he says. They have backslidden and fallen away. They have altogether become filthy and corrupt. And there is none who does good. No, not one. Let's go on. 
have those who work evil no knowledge, no understanding? Now look at this. They eat up my people. They eat up my people. You got to understand the enemy, the enemy doesn't like the fact that you, that you want to walk with God. He doesn't like the fact that you want to love Jesus Christ. So, so he's going to use anything or anybody, people who say there is no God, to cause you difficulty or, or problem or circumstances, or whatever the situation might be that comes against you. There are people right now that have lost their jobs just because they say they're Christians. Anybody with me? So look at this. Have those who work evil, no knowledge, no understanding. Now look at this. They eat up my people as they eat bread. They eat up my people as they eat bread. But, but look at this. They do not call upon God. Who doesn't call upon God? God's people. Why don't they call upon God? Look at verse, verse 5. Verse 5 is, is, is the, key, the key scripture here, amen, because you've got to see what, what's going on here, because I, I, imagine they, 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 had, they had gotten so paralyzed that they weren't even calling out to God anymore. They, they had drifted away. I'm going to show you what it, why that happens. And it says, and there they are. He says, there they are. There's who? God's people. He says, there they are in terror, in fear, say fear, fear, and dread, where there was and had and, and had been no terror. You weren't afraid before, but all of a sudden something something happened. Something took place. Something went wrong. Something didn't go your way. Things began to fall apart for you at home in different places. There was no fear there before. All of a sudden, things started going in another direction for you. And he says it this way, they, there they are, there they are, he says, in terror and dread where there was and had been no terror and dread. The, 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 that, that, did, that wasn't there before, but all of a sudden, something happened and Haven't you ever, haven't you ever had a friend? I, I know that you, you, you've had a friend or two that, 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 especially ladies, you know, that were afraid to be alone. So they just, they'd marry anybody that came along because they just didn't want to be afraid. They were afraid. The enemy had two horns and could see them. Afraid, afraid to be alone. A, a fear of a lot of things. There's, the, the enemy uses fear to, to just totally take over. Is there anyone with me? It says, so, so look, for God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. And you have put them to shame because God has rejected them. I want you to... I want you to go with me to a few scriptures here tonight. We're going to look at a few scriptures, okay, concerning fear, amen, and, and, and uh, what happened. What happened to these people, amen, that, that had fear. I want you to look at it with me tonight, amen, because it, it's real important for us to see this. In Joshua 2.9, let's go there with me. Joshua 2.9, we, we find a statement, amen, that Rahab uh, said to, to Joshua, 
Remember the children of Israel were coming through the land and they were conquering and conquering kings and conquering different things and they had heard about what God did at the Red Sea and and and, and so forth. Amen. And and this is their this is their their this is what they, they were feeling and this is what they were carrying. Look what it says. And she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror, imagine, he says, your terror, in other words, they were afraid, is falling upon us. The people, be, they, they got so, so afraid, so, so scared, amen, and that all the inhabitants of the land, look at this, faint because of you. Everyone there in the land of Canaan had heard about the children of Israel and, 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 and they began to get paralyzed with fear. Fear began to hold them back. Say, fear, fear. I, have I have victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You, you, need to, you need to put that into your spirit that you have victory. You have victory. That song we just sang, the reason I wanted him to sing is because even though I can't see him with my eye, I still believe. I still believe. Are you are you with me, church? So 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 imagine what they were what they were facing there. Amen. Go go with me. Let's go let's go with me. Amen. To the book of Exodus. Chapter 14, verse 10. Now this is the people of God. This is the, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. All right? They, they're coming out of Egypt. And look what it says. Fear, fear is a heavy-duty thing, church. Listen, fear will never let you operate in faith. Fear, fear won't let you operate in faith. You can't operate in faith and in fear at, you can you can't operate in both of them. You you got to walk in faith, believing with God, or you're going to walk in fear, and land out like the people in in Psalm 53 that said, all of a sudden they they backslid, they went backwards instead of forward, they were paralyzed. Look look what it says here. When Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked up, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and the Israelites were exceedingly what? Frightened. They were afraid. The, the Lord had just pulled them out of Egypt, did mighty works for them. I mean, they saw all kinds of things, but yet when they saw Pharaoh and his army coming after them, They, they were frightened. And look at this. And cried out to the Lord. And they began to cry out to the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? Let's go to verse, verse 11 and 12. Look at this. Verse 11 and 12. Upstairs. Hello. All right. I'll do it without you. They're asleep up there. Okay, Exodus chapter 14, verse, verse 11 and 12. Look what it says here. And they said to Moses, it is, because there are, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way and brought us out of Egypt? Now, I want you to hang on to that thought right there. I want you to hang on to what they're saying because, see, when we read that, we can look at these people and say, man, these people were, 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 were heavy duty. They didn't have any, uh, you know, any appreciation for what the Lord had done for them. But when fear is in operation, when fear is in operation, it can paralyze you and cause you to see what's not there as real. Look, 
write this down. If you, if you want to write anything down, write this down. Amen. Fear, fear, fear causes, this is what it causes. Wrong, wrong reasoning. This is them right there. Wrong reasoning. And wrong reasoning leads to wrong conclusions. They, they, were, they were telling, you know what they were telling Moses? Imagine when they were in Egypt and the Lord was moving in Egypt and he pulled them out of Egypt with victory. Then a, a while later, they had a, a different picture of God. They had doubt of who God, who God really was in their life. Who, who, does Saul, uh, who does 1 Corinthians 15, 57 say Jesus is in us? Who is he? Say it again. Say it again. He, he's, he's our victory. He's our victory. But see, but see, when you allow fear to grab you, you can look at Jesus in a different light. You can look at him differently. You can have a, a, a wrong conclusion of who, of who he is. You can have a, a different reasoning within your own self. And you can look at Jesus like somebody who just walked away from you and forgot you about your problems and who doesn't care about you. And fear is terrible. How many understand that tonight? Fear, and don't tell me you haven't. Every one of us at one point or another in our Christian life has thought that way. We've all thought that way at one point or another. When you were growing in the Lord, when you were coming to the Lord and you were growing in the Lord. And, 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 and so the Lord, listen to me, the Lord looks at us and he, he's looking at us because see every time, look, I want you to hear this with me tonight. We look at that person outside of this room that, that, that says, there is no God. But ask yourself what you're saying, or not you, but others outside of here, the people down in, in another church. What, what those people are saying when they have a different look about God. Have you ever, haven't you ever understood? That's why the Bible says they have no understanding. Because look at this. Sometimes we think that God is going to just let us fail and go through defeat. If you walk with Jesus, you're going to, you're going to win. How many understand that? You're going to win. He's a winner. If you walk with the Lord, you cannot lose. He doesn't lose. It's when you allow fear to enter into your life that it gives you wrong reasoning and a wrong conclusion. Now look at this. And wrong reasoning and wrong conclusion will lead you into wrong action. You'll, you'll begin to do things you never thought you would do. You've already thought them. You already looked at God as a, as, as a God that doesn't care. Because fear is terrible. Fear does that. So look at this. And they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way and brought us out of Egypt? They said, you should have just left us where we were. How many of you think you were better off where you were? How, how many of you thought, have ever thought that? How many, listen to me, the devil is a liar. How many know the devil is a liar?
I had a guy one time walk in here, walk in here. He had a big old mustache, a big old brush. He was, he was Sean's friend. Him and Sean got into an accident. He was Sean's friend. He had a big old brush, a big old vato loco, you know. And, and, uh, and, <laughs> and he walked in here one day. He gave his life to the Lord one day here. And then, and then all of a sudden, about two, three, four weeks later, he walks in here. Ah, you know what? I, I don't know about God. And, and we don't have any money. And, and uh, he was trying to burn us. But he thought, he thought I didn't know. And he starts telling me, I think I'm just going to go back to robbing banks. And, you know, and I looked at him and I said, come on, brother. I said, to tan, tan bigotón and everything. I says, and, and you're talking like that? I said, where's your faith in God? Hey. I think I'll just go back where I was. That's why the Bible says they were all backslidden. Fear will, 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 will cause you to look at things the way they're not. And it'll cause you to react in ways that you shouldn't. And it'll cause you to do crazy things. You begin to voice it. Ah, I don't know if it's worth it. And 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 wow, I said, wow, my God. How many uh, how many remember when we were beat up in the world? How many were beat up in the world? I was beat up in the world. I mean, I was beat up from the floor up. I mean beat up. We were beat up in the world. But you know what? The devil never lets us remember how he had us all tore up in the world. He just makes us believe that God is tearing us up. Everything. Since I met the Lord, everything's going wrong. Say, say it with me. He's a lying devil. I got it made with Jesus. How many believe you got it made with the Lord? Give him praise. Fear, fear is heavy duty, man. Fear will take you on a trip. There's a lot of people tonight backslidden. And, and, and they're, they're part of the group that are saying there is no God. Imagine when, 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 we, when, we, when we react in the way we do. And the Lord says, I've already given you victory. And, and we're reacting in a different way. We're actually saying, well, I don't know if you're there or not, you know. Look at verse 12. Did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. They hadn't even... They hadn't even crossed the Red Sea to the wilderness yet. And they had, they were already seeing themselves dead. How many know, how many know when, when things happen? When things happen and, and things go wrong and, and tragedy comes or certain things happen and all that. How many, how many know that all of a sudden you see things man, way out there. They're not even there yet. And you, you, you haven't even crossed the, the Red Sea yet. And you're already seeing the most terrible thing in the world. The water hose is broken in your car and you, you think the whole car's dying. <laughs> Just the water hose. I don't know who it was. Where's Rose? Is she here? Where's she at? Is she out there in the hallway? 
The other day, she, she, she got a Jeep. She bought a Jeep or got a Jeep or something. I don't know. She said she got in it and it died. So she said, do you think somebody could look at it for me? You know, I don't know what's wrong with it and so forth and so on. And she said it just died. I said, yeah, we'll check into it. I says, well, she called the, the day she was supposed to bring the key over here. She calls up. I just jumped in it. And it's alive. I said, you probably forgot to put gas. <laughs> ah, Jesus. I I imagine, imagine. Fear, fear is heavy. Fear, fear is heavy. Go, go with me. Go with me to number 13. From verse 31 to 33. Let's read that. Look what it says. Look what it says. But, but his fellow scouts, remember the 12 spies that went in, in, into, into the land of Canaan? He said, but his fellow scouts said, we are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are stronger than we are. Imagine, they haven't even fought him yet. And they're already, they're already defeated. Fear. Oh, you lost your job. You're never going to get another job. Fear. How many know the, the Bible says God owns the, the world and all that is in it? He owns the cattle and a thousand hills and all the gold and silver and silver. Everything. How am I going to pay my bills? I don't know what I don't know what I'm going to do now. What are we going to do? And we and 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 yet we serve the Lord that gives us victory. We come in and we sing the revival in the church. Put him under my feet, under my feet. And we walk out of here and <laughs> But his fellow scout said, we are not able to go up against the people of Canaan for they are stronger than we are. Fear will give you the wrong Reasoning and the wrong conclusion. And then you'll begin to react to it. Let's go to the next verse. Look what it says. So they brought the Israelites an evil report of the land which they had scouted out, saying, the land through which we went to spy it out is, is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. They're, they're, I mean, they're telling this. These men are huge. They're big. So in fear, look at verse 33. There we saw the Nephilim, or giants. So we saw the giants there, the sons of Anak, who come from the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Now look at this. This is what they're saying. We look at ourselves, we see ourselves as grasshoppers compared to them. It wasn't, it wasn't God saying that. It wasn't anybody else saying it. was their fear talking. Say fear. Fear, fear is heavy duty. It'll get you to see things the wrong way. It'll get you to see God in the wrong way. To think about the Lord in the wrong way. And then it'll get you to react in the wrong way. 
Anybody with me? L- look at this. Go with me. Are you, are you here? I'm just giving you a few scriptures from, 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 uh, uh, from fear as to what happened to some of these people. Now look at this. Every one of these people I've been showing you about, God, God wanted to bless them. Do you think he brought the people of God out of, out of Egypt to curse them and to put fear in them and to, 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 to let them die in the wilderness? And, no, they, be, they begin to voice it, listen to me, they begin to voice it before they even got to the wilderness and it happened to them. Remember Job, remember the story of Job? You know what Job said? The very thing I feared has fallen on me. He he'd spoken about that before. He 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 he'd, allowed, he'd already told the devil what, what he was most afraid of, and the devil's attacked him through that very thing. I'm afraid my marriage ain't going to make it. I'm afraid my my son and daughter are never going to get saved. I'm afraid we're never going to make it financially. We're never going to be able to do it. And 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 the devil says, "Ha! Ah, I know where to get. I know where their fear is. I, I know where to get them." I know where I can move in on their life. Anybody with me tonight? Look at this. In the book of the book of First Samuel. Chapter 10, verse 8. Let's read that. Faith, faith is powerful, church. Say, faith is powerful. powerful. When, When you can allow yourself to allow God... To help you develop faith in Him. Faith in His Word. Faith in who He is. Listen to me. You can conquer. You can conquer. You can conquer. But, but, if, you, but if you allow fear to grab a hold of you. If you allow fear to grab a hold of you. It will conquer you. Look at this. You shall go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice peace offerings. You shall wait seven days until I come to you and show you what you shall do. Let's go on. And when Saul had turned his back to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. Now imagine the Lord had, the Lord had touched Samuel, Saul, gave him another heart, anointed him. Man, he had faith. He was going to do great and powerful things for the Lord. Remember? Or right, how many? How many understand that tonight? Now, now jump down with me to First Samuel thirteen, chapter thirteen. Verse, from verse 11 to 13. Let's read that. Not very long after. Look what, look what Samuel has to tell Saul. Look what it says. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattering from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the, the Philistines were assembled at Michmash. I thought the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. He says, so I forced myself to offer a burnt offering. Can you imagine? Out of fear. Say out of fear. He, 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 went, into, he went into reasoning, a conclusion, and then he went into acting. Say reasoning. 
fear will cause you to start thinking about it. Man, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to go here? What's going to happen? And then you're going to get a, a conclusion. It's going to draw you to a conclusion. And you're going to see a wrong picture. You're going to see a wrong picture of God. And then you're going to act upon what you, you just started going through. Now look at this. Verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandments of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. He said, if you would have just not, not feared, not feared, just waited on the Lord. If you would have just been patient with God. If you would have just believed the Lord, just, you know, but thanks be unto God that gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, if you would have just put your faith in God, he says, your kingdom would have been established. Fear, fear comes in many, in many things. It's what, what might, might put fear in this sister or this brother or this sister or, or, or any of us in this room may be different from the other person. But we, we listen, we, you gotta, you got to put your faith in God. You, you, can't let, you cannot put your faith in what you see or feel. But you got to put your faith in the Word of God. Put your faith in what He said. Not, not, not what you're thinking or feeling or reasoning. Not what that problem wants you to believe. Listen to me tonight. What the Word of God says. That's what's real. Anybody with me today? Look, look at this. Look at this. Go, go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Verse 24. Okay. I want you to write this down if you're writing anything down. People who, in, who embrace wrong reasoning. People who embrace wrong reasoning ultimately end up building an other pathway, a different pathway than the one that the Lord had them on. They begin to build a diff, another pathway for themselves and forming some other image of God. They begin to see God different. He's not the same God that I met that set me free. I begin to see God differently. Are you, are you with me tonight? But the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. The same God that had the power to set you free is the same God that has the power to help you through every situation in life. He's the same God. If you're going to give him praise, give him praise. Now, you got to understand, you got to walk with God. Remember what, what the psalmist said. The psalmist said, for there was no terror, all of a sudden terror came to be. Go, go with me to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 57. We'll, we'll be back to Samuel in just a moment. But, I, but I, want you to, I want you to see Paul. Paul the Apostle, 
speaking there, I mean, facing almost anything and everything there was, but I want you to see this. Verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. He says, For even when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no ease or rest, but we were oppressed in every way and afflicted at every turn, fighting and contentions without dread and fears within us. I imagine. Imagine what he's saying. Anybody with me? Let's read that again. For even when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no ease or rest, but we were oppressed in every way and afflicted at every turn, fighting and contentions with, with dread and fears. Huh? Did I miss see that? I didn't see that right. This is Paul talking. You know what I believe? I believe Paul fought those fears. You'd almost have to be non-human not to have any type of fear of some kind. But, but faith has to be greater in you than fear. Listen, you've got to learn to fight fear. You've got to learn to put it down in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, is there anybody with me? You've got to learn to conquer fear. Conquer fear. One day, I'm going to give you a little testimony. I, I, I really don't like to talk about it, but I, I, I will. One one day I, I went to I went to speak in in a no I better not they're t they're videotaping this well I'll I'll, I'll just go this far I was targeted. I was speaking in, in a place and I was targeted because I used to be in my younger days, I was, I was a, a part of a gang, a gang member. They, they don't believe that you could ever get out of any gang. The Lord, the Lord sovereignly, the Lord sovereignly spoke to me and showed me what was going on. He, he, I, I saw the whole scenario being put together and, and the Lord took me and five other preachers out of this place. Fear just came on me. Uh, just a flashbacks of the past. Terrible, terrible flashbacks. I mean, it was, it was, it gripped my heart. I was, uh, I was sitting in my office one night in my church about two weeks, three weeks after that incident. I was sitting in my office on, and right there in Edgewater and with Brother Chuck. We were in my office talking, and the phone rang. I picked it up, and the voice on the other side said, are you, are you the thug that changed your life? Yeah, I guess so, I said, you know. <laughs> he says, he said this, he says, who gave you permission to leave California. I said, God did. And he says, 
we'll be in touch, and they hung up. Well, I was already carrying that, that thing on me, and then this happened, and I started thinking crazy, man. I said, you know what, man? I would start carrying guns and everything in this place, man. I, I was already visualizing crazy things, man. Dreams. And one day I walked into my church. I walked in there. I was there by myself. And I walked in. I says, no, this is, this is not the Lord. I said, this, this can't be the Lord, you know. So I, went, I remember going into the sanctuary and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you're going to set, you, you brought me here. You brought me here. You got me pastoring here. And, and so you're going to have to lift this thing off of me. I can't, I can't minister like this. It was a terrible fear. And right there at that altar, I felt it leave. And the Lord just took it. Is there anybody here tonight? It's ugly. I, 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 listen, when I'm talking to you about fear, I can tell you it, it is an ugly thing because fear can cause you to do something that you'll regret later. Are you with me? And I said, I can't, I can't live like this. I, 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 I said, I refuse to live like this. And uh, I won't. But the Lord took it. The Lord took it. And I remember one, one, one night here, some years went by, and, and I'm here, we're ministering here, we're praying for different people, and I was standing right here praying for somebody, and all of a sudden this, this individual showed up right there in front of me, and he, he looked at me, and he tells me, he says, he says so, so you're preaching the word. I said, yeah. He says, I know who you are. And he said, but that's okay, he says, and he turned around and left. But, but the Lord had to lift that he broke that he broke that thing. Is there anybody with me? So 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 I, I tell you, it's 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 a terrible, it's an ugly thing, and I believe Paul fought against it. How I many know you got to fight it? You you can't get, you can't let it take you. You got to conquer fear. Say it with me: conquer fear. You can't you cannot live with that. You cannot live like that. Or it will take you down. Are you are you with me? So let's go back with me to First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty four. Look look at this. This is this is Saul Saul again. Look at this. Caused him caused him to not obey the voice of God. Fear. How many know sometimes, sometimes even people can have good intentions, people can, can, can want to give you good advice, or, or even get you to do what they want you to do, even though it's not the Lord. And, and if you carry fear in you, listen to me, and you're afraid to offend them, afraid to say no, afraid to say no, I'm going to serve the Lord, I'm going to do, do things God's way. Listen, if you're afraid... You'll lose out. So look what it says here. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words. Why did, why did he sin? Look at this. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. I did what they wanted me to do instead of what God wanted me to do. Hello, is there anybody here? Sometimes if you're not, how many know fear speaks to you? How many know fear has a voice? Sometimes it, 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 sometimes it sounds like you, but it has a voice, and it'll speak to you. 
It will speak to you, man. It will try to get you to go against what God wants you to do. Fear is not your friend. Are you with me tonight? I said, are you with me tonight? So, so look at this. If you write anything down, write this down. A heart of faith. Fill your heart with faith, not fear. See, my heart has to be filled with faith, not fear. A heart of faith never lets fear. Are you, are you with me? Determine its action. Faith, I mean, a heart of faith will never let fear control it. Fear will paralyze you. We've been reading there, Saul, the children of Israel. I mean, all these people, God wanted to bless them, and he could not bless them because fear paralyzed them. They, they just couldn't believe that God wanted to bless them, that he had their best interest, that he was going to give them victory no matter how it looked, no matter what it felt like. Come on, is there anybody with me? No matter how, what the devil said about the problem, no matter what anybody said about the problem, no matter how bad it looked. We are just talking to... Uh, a couple of people up at the store, Brother Ken and I, we were at the store earlier uh, that where they give donations to the men's home. And uh, we were there. There were two, two Hispanics there that, 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 that were there with their boss, and their boss was, was spending a lot of money on them. And uh, they said that their mother had been in ICU dying for the past three or four weeks. The doctor said there was no, nothing they could do. There was no hope. And they said, but today, she's alive, feeling good, coming back to herself. And you, you know what he said? A lot of prayers. Anybody with me? Are you with me? You, you know, sometimes we face circumstances that seem so un uncontrolled. You can't control them. And, and, and that's where fear comes in. Don't, don't let fear control you. Don't let fear. It, remember, if you write that down, a heart of faith never lets fear determine its action or determine or control it to do what it wants it to do. Faith is stronger than fear. Say, faith is stronger than fear. Right under that, write this, we must never let fear lead us. Never let fear lead you. Never let fear lead you. And, 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 and you might say tonight, well, I don't have any fear. Yeah, you do. When things hit you, you're going to have to fight fear. That, that's, a, that's a spirit that attacks every believer. It, it's a spirit that comes because it's in our natural, look, look, at, look at this, it's in our human nature to fear. It's a, it's a part of your human nature. And you got to fight against fear. you got to fight against it. 
Fear will cause you to go in a wrong direction, away from faith, away from Jesus. You'll get a picture of God that's, that's distorted. You'll start thinking crazy things about the time you know it. The devil has you out there and you think that you're having a better life out there than you would with, with the Lord. We had a brother here. I'm not going to mention his name. He's been gone from here for some time. He moved away to another state. He, he met his wife here. He married her here. And then they started having children. And one of the kids, one of the little babies... One of the little babies got so sick. Little baby. That the doctor said this little baby's not gonna make it. They, they, they could this little baby, even after they moved to, to they moved to Albuquerque, and after they got to Albuquerque, this little baby was still being taken to the hospital. This little baby couldn't breathe, couldn't find a way to breathe. They were trying to help this little baby to live and 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 one of the things, now look at this. You've got to hear what I'm going to say to you because fear is, fear is terrible. When his brother was taking him to the airport, he was flying out to Albuquerque. This is what he, this is what he told his brother. He says, I don't, I don't think I have any faith in God anymore. What a confession to make. You know what he was saying? Fear has controlled my life. Fear has taken over my life. I don't think I believe in God anymore. Is there anybody with me tonight? The, 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 imagine out of that, we're just hearing today, he's, he's saying, I don't, even, I don't even believe in the rapture. They've been saying the rapture's coming for over 100 years. I don't believe it anymore. Imagine that the distortion that comes to a life when you let fear control you. Out of one problem. And all he needed to do was put his faith in God. And, and we, we prayed. And we prayed for that little baby here. And the Lord healed that little baby. Yes, give the Lord praise. Imagine how... Fear is, is, is heavy. It can get you to begin to talk crazy. Foolish. And we begin to act like those out there that say there is no God. And we begin to reason within our own selves. And then we begin to take conclusions that aren't real. They're wrong. And by the time you know it, we're acting in ways we should have never acted. I want you to write this down. Wrong action. Wrong action can easily develop into a life's pattern, a way of being, a way of doing things. Haven't you ever seen people, don't you know people tonight that 
that everything puts fear in them. They're afraid of everything. Anybody with me? Fear, fear won't let you go forward. It wants to take you backwards. It wants to take your faith away from God so that you won't believe. I look back and I was thinking, I was thinking of this when I was reading all this. I was thinking about it. You know, the, the devil wanted me to go right back to my old ways. Anybody with me? And, and, and I was thinking about it. I was already contemplating it. And I came in that church that morning early before anybody would show up. And I said, I'm going to get along with the Lord. And neither God's going to break this thing from me, man. I'm not getting up from there until I'm free. Well, give him praise. Give the Lord praise. Brother, don't, don't let fear, don't let fear, don't let fear grip you. Because what you see out here, no matter what it looks like, the God that lives inside of you, go back with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 57. Chapter 15, verse 57. Look what it says. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 57. I'll read it. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. He gives us the victory. Say it with me. He gives us the victory in every situation, in every circumstance. It doesn't mean you're not going to have a battle, but it means you're going to win. It means you're going to be the one on top and not the, not the one on the bottom. Come on, give him praise. When everyone is looking at you, and thinking, man, you must be crazy for believing all that stuff. You're the one that's going to come out on top because this is his promise. This is his promise to his children. And he said, he gives us the victory. He gives us the victory, making us conquerors, making us conquerors, making us conquerors. You need to put fear down. You need to fight fear. Don't let fear control you. Don't let fear dominate your life. Don't let it become a lifestyle for you. It'll become a lifestyle, I guarantee you. Every time something goes wrong, there it goes again. How come God's not helping us? I've seen people. I've seen all kinds of people. They don't understand why the devil sends fear to attack their life. Look at this. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, making us conquerors, making us conquerors. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you're not weak. Come on, you're strong in the Lord. You're a conqueror. You're a conqueror. Say it with me. I'm a conqueror. I want you to write it a thousand times for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me, church. Look up here at me. Look up here at me. No matter what happens, no matter what comes, we don't know what's coming in the near future. We don't know what's going to take place. We don't know if all the jobs will fall away. Somebody was telling me today, Colorado or Denver 
is number five on the, on the economy. It's up there in the economy with jobs and different things like that. But listen to me. We don't know what can happen from one moment to the next. It could all crumble. It could all fall apart. Are you with me? Don't put your faith in that. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in the Lord. All of that can fall apart. But Jesus will never fall apart. He's got everything under control. He knows what he's doing. How many understand that? He knows what he's doing. Look, at, look, look, look to the sky. Look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. Say, I know you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but you know what you're doing. Yes, give him praise. Look at this. 2 Timothy 1.12. Let's go there. 2 Timothy 1.12. And we're going to come and pray. Look what, he, look what it says. I give thanks to him. This is Paul speaking. Who has granted me the needed strength... And may be able for this, Christ Jesus, our Lord. How many know he's going to, he's going to make, make, give you the strength to go through it, to make it, to, to get the victory? You're going to have it. You're going to get it. You're going to be able to do it. Now, now, now look up here at me. Don't, don't, think that, don't think that he's going to do it all for you. Don't think you're just going to kick back and drink iced tea. You got to fight. You got him in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You got to use your faith. Release your faith in the Lord. Release your faith. And look what it says. Because he has judged and counted me faithful and trustworthy, appointing me to this stewardship of the ministry. Let's read verse 13. Though I formally blasphemed and persecuted and was shamefully and out tra tragically and aggressively insulting to him, nevertheless I obtained mercy because I had acted out of ignorance in unbelief. How many know how many know we we're, we're good at, we're, we were like that. We we're just like Paul. But we're not like that no more. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not like that no more. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Come on. He took, he took the foolish things. Look at this. We were, we were being conquered out there. We were being defeated out there. And he picked us. The Bible says he takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He doesn't leave you foolish. He makes you a conqueror. So many, so many scriptures. How many know you, you can defeat the enemy in everything? I said in everything. Put your faith in everything. In everything. He's not, he's not going to let you down. Amen? I want you to stand with me. Now, let me say this to you. When you walk out of this building, when you walk out of this building, the enemy is going to test you. It's going to hit you some way. Anybody here? Look, look at your neighbor and say, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't let fear get you. Get a clear picture 
of God. Get a clear picture of the Lord. Let me, let, me, let me share this with you. I'm going to share this and I'm going to close. Years ago, years ago I was in a car accident. My disc appeared in my neck and in my back, five of them, my neck, five of them, my back, my vertebrae, and all that was, was damaged badly. They, they told me they told me I, 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 would, I would need surgery in order to make it. I says, I'm not going to get no surgery. They, they, took, they sent me to a pain doctor. I don't know if any of you know what a pain doctor is. They sent me to a pain doctor, and, and I was there with her for about three days. And when she was done with me, she says, I don't even know how you are walking. That's what she said. I said, I'll tell you how I'm walking. I said, I'm walking through him. I'm walking through his strength. And one day I was at home, Brother Eli, I was at home. And a pain shot down this leg. I mean, a pain that was so unbearable. And it paralyzed this leg. I'm home by myself. And and I got up in the name of Jesus. I said, this thing is not going to happen, man. And I, I forced, I forced my leg to move. I forced it. I, I moved it. I began to move it. And I, every, with every move, I said, in the name of Jesus. And it came back to normal. The following week, that lying devil hit the other leg. I mean, I got up and forced that leg in the name of Jesus. This leg now, I couldn't move it. It was paralyzed. And I, in the name of Jesus, I began to move that leg. I said, the devil's not beating me on this, man. And, I, and the Lord healed that leg and it's normal. Is there anybody with me? From that accident, I, I, I developed sometimes pain in my feet. Unbearable pain sometimes. And the enemy said, because I get up every, every morning, every morning early, and I'll go, I'll go walk two and a half miles. I'll put my... I get my iPad with my headphones and I just go walk for two and a half miles. And, and sometimes the enemy will bring pain to one foot or the other. And I just keep going in the name of Jesus till I'm finished. You, you have to conquer... You have to conquer fear. Fear. I could, I could just sit down and say, 
forget it. I just can't make it no more. I'm just going to sit right here and cry and, you know. How many know that's not going to help this leg? This ain't going to help these feet. I get up, go. Sometimes I'll do it twice. Sometimes I'll, I'll do it in the morning. and Sometimes I'll go walk in the evening. Like tonight after church, I'll go take off for two and a half miles. I already got my path. And I enjoy that time with the Lord, just, just with the Lord. But see, if you let fear, if you let fear, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. Sure you do. Put your faith in Jesus. You don't have, you don't have any, listen to me, you don't have any problems if you trust the Lord. You, you, the problems you see are his. Look at this. I want him to put up there Psalms 55, 22. I love this psalm. Look at this. Psalms 55, 22, if they'll put it up there for me. Look what it says. Cast all your burdens on your neighbor. Call up your friend on the phone and tell him all your problems. Tell him everything you're going through. How many know that she, they're going through the same problems you're going through? They can't help you. They're battling the same battles you are. That's what Peter said. We're all going through the same battles. Don't think you're going to, through it by yourself. We're all fighting battles. Cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it, and He, He, the one that gives me victory, He, look at this, will sustain you. He'll hold you up. He'll hold you up. Come on. He'll hold you up. He will never allow the consistently. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. That's our God. That's a picture of Jesus. That's a picture of the Lord. Praise God. You can rejoice, even though all kinds of things are being shattered all over the place. You can rejoice. You can thank the Lord. He's an awesome God. I said he's an awesome God. We were, we were at Cherry Creek. We were at Cherry Creek today. I went over there with Brother Ken. Because there's a store there that, that blesses the men with donations. And, and we went over there. I went over there with him to thank the gentleman for helping the men's home. It's not a women's store. We're going to have to find a women's store. And, and the, the gentleman, we're talking to him. He's the owner of the place. You can't buy a suit there for less than... Le, the, the less suit you'll buy there is probably about $1,200. That's this man. Everything there, you're afraid to touch anything. But the man says, what is your story? He says, I want to hear your story. He told me. I start sharing it with him. I imagine we're in Cherry Creek. 
uh, in Cherry Creek, telling them about what the Lord did for us, how he set us free from drug addiction and alcoholism. Right? Those people out there wanting to help, they wanting to help people that are in this, this type of situation. And they're, they're hearing the word. What if I walked in there with fear? Oh, we can't do it. No, brother, we're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Yes. I think we're going to have to find a woman's store there that's nylons for $1,000. Then we'll have all the women wanting to go in the home. Amen. I mean, they're, they're asking us for our testimony, but God has a reason for it. God has a purpose. God's setting them up. How many here tonight can say, Pastor, tonight we're going to defeat fear. We're going to get, get it out of the way tonight. We're going to settle business tonight. We're going to make sure we put it under our feet. Because that thing tries to pop up. When you least expect it, it tries to hit you again. And, and, and if you let it in, it'll become a way of life for you. Let, let, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Fear will try to get you to move God out of pity. You got to move God with faith. You got to believe. Say believe. You got to believe God. It's a mighty God. We're going to defeat it tonight. Can we defeat it tonight? Can we defeat that thing tonight? Can we defeat fear tonight? Let's put it, let's put it under our feet. Let's conquer it. I'm going to have Sister Becky sing that song once again. I believe. And I will, I'm going to ask you all to come and stand right here with us. Come on, everyone. We're going to defeat this thing. I want you to just hear the song for a moment before we sing it. I want you to hear it. Move on up. Move, move up this way so we can make room. <laughs> 